you know, You're probably right. Yeah, I mean, that's the, all the incentive that they need. Um, you know, the other problem, too, Barbara, is that they're, it's not just the things that they're, that they're doing, but the things that they're ignoring. It seems to me everywhere I go that the one thing on people's minds is this debt. And the fact that we are we uh, don't live in the Washington fantasy that we can keep borrowing money to to get out of a debt yeah. problem, and everywhere I go, people talk about that. It's on their minds. They know it's weighing on the economy. There's this um, regime regime uncertainty that we're dealing with, and. Um, you know, they, they they just don't want to talk about it. Well, I, I'd like to talk about it. I think a lot of people would like to start dealing with that. If they dealt with the debt, ironically, given the situation in the world, it could have put America back in a really good position again. How would you deal with the debt? Start cutting spending. There's no mystery to what to do. Start cutting it. I know it's a political issue. You're so issue. basic and so, you know, that's what mommy and daddy told us when we were, you know, in the fourth grade. You, you can't spend more than you have. But we've done it. We keep doing it. California does it. Cities do it. L.A. is almost bankrupt. I mean, it's it's shocking what's happening, and they keep spending. But you know, you see, you see economists, Nobel Prize winning economists yes. like Paul Krugman from the New York Times, telling us it would be a mistake to stop spending money. Yet his solutions, Keynesian solutions, have never ever worked. Point to a place in time in history when it's happened and it's worked, and I'd be the first to say that I'm wrong, but they haven't. And uh, if we keep doing this, we're going to have a destruction of the dollar. Once the dust settles in Europe and the euro probably goes under or maybe it comes, it stays around in some weakened form, mm-hmm. then the attention is going to turn to us because our balance sheet looks much worse in all the countries that are going under right now. And you have the pressure, just looking at the wires the last few days from Russia coming up with their new currency that they're talking about, and then you have what China may or may not do. And a lot of this is really over the heads of most Americans because I don't think most people really understand how all that monetary transaction works. Yeah, it makes it very hard. We're the world's reserve currency, which means that we've been able to um, to print money, particularly since August fifteenth, nineteen seventy one, yeah. when we went off the gold standard, and uh, you know, printed and not uh, have to pay the piper. We've been exporting probably two thirds of our inflation around the world, and the world's you know, had enough of it. Mm-hmm. And if um, if uh, China and Russia succeed, and there's no reason to say they shouldn't, Ch- China has the industrial manufacturing base now. Russia has huge commodity reserves. Mm-hmm. It, it's if, if they actually manage to come up with one or two new reserve currencies, and we no longer have that, it's going to be very painful here. For a country that relies on imports, that has a really bad you know, negative balance of trade, it's going to be very tricky. And how we turn that around is is part of what worries me, too, because our manufacturing base isn't here anymore. You know, I mean, it's so different from, from World War II when we had to mobilize very quickly, but we had the factories, we had the manpower, we had the means to do it. God forbid we had the same situation today. We don't. Yeah, all those all those uh, manufacturing facilities have been converted to condos. You know, with <laughs> <That's true. laughs> brick wall condos with house plants yeah, yeah, with ferns. Right. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it it's not a uh, it's not a really good situation. But I, I you know here's here's the the irony is as bad as we've dug in, if we really manage to deal with spending, if we manage to deal with the long term unfunded liabilities, um, if we managed to uh, deal with um, the regime uncertainty, in other words, if the if the administration would just butt out and let companies fail. Mm-hmm. The truth is, is that we could actually turn this around relatively quickly, but it's going to take an enormous amount of political will. And the hope there is that movements like the Tea Party movement, movements like the 912 movement, movements like the Liberty movement are going to combine together and f- put the right people in office who, who will say, I don't care what happens, whether I'm in Congress two years or not. Uh, from now, I'm just going to do the right thing, cut spending. That's that's the optimism that's out there. Are there enough Republican candidates for Congress and, and Senate, but I'll say Congress particularly, who feel that way, that if enough of you guys and, and gals across the country got into office, that that change could happen? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's I, I seem to talk to a lot of the, these folks, and they seem to feel the same way. And you see it happening with Chris Christie in New Jersey. Yeah, we were just talking about yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, he's he's terrific, and he's saying the same things. I don't care if I get voted out of office in four years. I'm just going to do what I think is the right thing, what I was elected to do, and you know, the consequences yeah. be what they may. And in a state like that, that's almost astonishing. Oh, my gosh, you know yeah. Jersey. I, I grew up there, so I know Jersey, too, and yeah. it's, it's amazing politics there. It's, it's a brutal town. I, I grew up in a brutal state. I mean, I grew up in Hudson County, which at the time, <laughs> I think, was and may still be the most densely Democratic county it probably in the country. still is, yeah. And it's, you know, 
it's where the shot on, on the waterfront. <laughs> <laughs> For good reason. <laughs> if you're just joining us, I am Barbara Simpson on KSFO. My guest is John Dennis. Uh, he'll be running against Nancy Pelosi. Uh, for Congress in November. He won the primary, uh, and he's here to talk to us about uh, his thoughts on politics, about uh, some of the issues in the campaign. Uh, This is a wonderful opportunity for you. If you never heard of the guy, here he is. You have a chance to call up, talk to him, ask him a question, and see what's going to happen, because uh, his winning in November uh, is very, very important. It's not going to be easy, but it is possible. Wouldn't that be amazing to hold U.S. history? Okay, if you want that free historical information and the free collector's DVD, the number to call is 1-800-505-6991. 1-800-505-6991. You're listening to Barbara Simpson on Hot Talk 560 KSFO. Barbara Simpson right here in Hot Talk 560 KSFO. We are talking in studio with John Dennis, who is uh, running against Nancy Pelosi for the 8th Congressional District come November. Um, we're talking about the issues. Just give me a thumbnail. What's, what's your position on national defense? Strong national defense. We, we uh, I think in terms of budget, we, everything has to be on the table. But the one thing that the, that the Constitution is, uh, uh, stresses that the federal government should do is have, you know, we come together for a common defense. It's in the preamble. So um, we we should, um, you know, make sure that we're always prepared to defend everybody in this country. But as I was just alluding to, you know, I think I think everything's got to be on the table this time around. And the one thing that I have uh, mentioned is um, in, in, the, in the primaries, I think we need to do a review of the bases that we've got outside of the U.S. I think people don't realize we have 700 bases around the world. Uh, in about 130 countries, and I've, I've just asked the question: Are they all defending us, mm-hmm. or are they maybe you know part of a, you know part of a, just a you know a, 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 um, a for lack of a better word an empire that we don't uh, that we don't necessarily need anymore? Maybe sort of remnant from the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Um, so I've just said that we should review them, just like we did with the domestic bases in the early 90s. And we haven't done that at all, no, have we? No, no. I, don't, I can't ever remember doing that. We certainly were anxious to close domestic bases when all that happened. I remember Pelosi and Boxer and Feinstein and all those people cheering, closing the bases. We're going to have all this wonderful money to do all these great social programs. We lost what, None Hunter's of which Point happened. and Treasure Island yeah. and Alameda. And I just ask, I mean, do we really need the base in Zambia? Um, you know, and I... I like the I like the name Zambia, so I go with them first. But <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, it's if you look at it, it's a landlocked country in yeah. South Africa. I mean, what is the purpose of it? What's the purpose of the base in Bulgaria? I mean, are the Bulgarians going to make a move on us? I mean, don't we think we'll see them coming? Mm-hmm. You know, um, Crete, there's a base. Uh, Okinawa would like us to be out of there. Um, you know, Japan is still the second biggest economy in the world. And why are we defending them 65 years after the uh, after the Cold War? Mm-hmm. So I think, that, and, and well, we part may of end it up was com- they weren't allowed to have a military. To speak of, yes, yeah, part of the as part of the the um, the, the surrender, surrender right. but um, but I, I mean I think we can look at this as I said there's 700 plus around mm-hmm. the world I think we can look at them and see what we really need. What about NATO? Has that had its day, or are we sacrificing? Because I, I, I see that weakening a lot, especially under this administration. I think the attitude of of Obama towards Great Britain is very dangerous. Well, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know uh, about um, about NATO. I think NATO's day is is coming on. But it could be one of the reasons why we're having such uh, so much tension with the, with the British. You mm-hmm. know, um, so yeah, I think we could, we should review our position with NATO as well. It creates it also creates sort of an in, unnecessary antagonism. I think. In in speaking of national defense, um, or national security comes under that heading. What about the whole issue of illegal aliens? Yeah, that's a that's a bad bit of business, and it's another I think another wide uh, open failure of the federal government. I mean, the federal government took that responsibility on, and then ignored it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you see Arizona react, and then they're going to get sued because of it.